from KSET 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, three suspects hold up a driver at gunpoint and take his car. More on their chase with police just ahead. Watching football games in person. That's what officials at the University of Alabama have planned right now. We're going to have the details. And outside with live cam, yeah, a few more showers and thunderstorms were in the area, particularly late in the day yesterday. Any leftovers for midweek? We'll talk to Mike in just a moment. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is August 19th. Thanks for joining us this morning. It was so nice yesterday and not too bad this morning. And people got some real downpours again, Mike Osterhage, but you were talking about that all morning yesterday. And I kept getting the alert on my phone, says rain's in the area. I kept looking at the weather app. And, and you missed out again. And nothing it felt like it and then temperatures also skyrocketed to 103 right before those storms started to move through so in yeah. the afternoon yeah that's what yeah, we yeah. got up to it's going to be another triple digit day today and there may be still one or two of those showers out there first of all again kind of pleasant when you step outside it's not overly humid you can see the little bit uh, better clearer view of the the lights out there dew points are in the mid 60s right now so again not bad not bone dry air but uh, a lot better than where we've been and this is going back 12 hours on the satellite and radar loop and there's those showers those thunderstorms that popped up yeah some folks I've got a picture I'm going to show you a little bit later on a uh, rain gauge in the backyard, which wow, boy, make us all envious of uh, the amount of rain you got there. Molds on the high side and throughout the rest of today. First of all, this morning, partly cloudy skies and 75 degrees with uh, just a little bit of a breeze out of the northeast. And then, yes, triple digit temperatures, mostly sunny skies. We still have the same pattern, this northerly flow, and you get little glitches moving on through here. So that's why there's a very small mention of a shower to today. And hope for the best, but expect just basically blazing heat. Any changes coming up this weekend? Details in just a few minutes. Time saver traffic. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Morning, sir. Good morning, Mike. How are you doing today? Good. Anything going on yet? Well, I see one dot on the map. One dot up there, but I'm I have to I have to brag. Yes. I'm two for two. Two for two on receiving rain at the house. Yeah, really? So I've been missing it all this time. This time I've hit it twice in a row. So rub it I'm, in. I'm ready to go buy a lottery <laughs> ticket now. You should look at the roadways uh, cleaning up an accident. Now this accident happened a little bit earlier this morning in the clearing stage. It's just about completely cleared up eastbound 410. Watch out for emergency lights between Harry Wurzbach and Perrin Vital. They were blocking off a number of lanes till they could clear that mess out there. There's uh, 410 Harry Wurzbach. It looks as if maybe uh, they've just about cleared it up. Things look like they're resuming back to normal. Here in the downtown area, 35 of Brooklyn, no issues. And as we move on to some other areas like 21 at 410 up there by the airport, you can see there traffic moving pretty smoothly right now. Marcus Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. New this morning, scary moments for a driver after police say he was carjacked at gunpoint late last night. Happened just before 11 in the 5100 block of Overpool Street. That's near Ben Russ Boulevard. SAPD says three men held with man and took his vehicle in the parking lot of a store off WW White. They got away at first, but police spotted the vehicle and started following. After a short pursuit, the suspects crashed out on MLK and I-10. Police say the three suspects tried to run across 10 and into a neighborhood. One was caught. Police are still looking for the other two. They're also looking for a black Hyundai that may have been involved in the carjacking. A 15 year old is in the hospital after he was shot last night. It happened near Veracruz and South Brazos by the Alazan Apache Apartments. Police say a 15 year old boy was approached by two men and a woman and was asked if he was from the area. We were told that when he responded by saying no, he was shot. The two men and woman ran off. Turning now to the pandemic, Bear County now reporting an increase in 143 new COVID-19 cases, bringing our seven day rolling average down even further when it comes to COVID related deaths. When another 20 were just confirmed as COVID related in Bear County, the number in our hospitals continues to improve. The number of people hospitalized has now dropped to 569, 255 in ICU, 184 on ventilators. As worldwide cases of coronavirus creep past 22 million and doctors in the U.S. are urging states to use testing data as a roadmap for reopening. But now officials say many of those critical results may not be accurate. ABC's Megan Tivrizian has details. 
This morning, new concerns about faulty coronavirus test results. The FDA revealing Tuesday that one of the most widely used tests could be giving invalid or false negative results. The administration also warning that the tests produced by Thermo Fisher Scientific are vulnerable to false negatives if the samples aren't properly processed. The trouble is there are areas of the country, several, that are actually in community spread. It comes as states grapple with how to stop the virus from spreading. You go in, people get infected, boom, they close them down. In New York City, people coming in from states on the travel advisory list must sign a quarantine form at hotels and short-term rentals before they're issued keys. Hawaii is now postponing tourism until October 1st. Schools across the country are struggling with how to move forward, too. Iowa State finding 175 cases in its first week after testing students moving into residence halls. Students my age don't really take it seriously or as seriously as it needs to be taken. The University of Alabama announcing fans will be able to watch football games in person, despite students warning that social distancing is already being ignored by their classmates. And at Notre Dame, students are under two weeks of new restrictions after finding 89 new cases on Monday alone. Most of those infections now trace back to off-campus parties. We can't have these large parties because of the level of asymptomatic spread. Off-campus parties also to blame for a cluster at the University of Tennessee and North Carolina State. 14% of North Carolina's total cases are now among people aged between 18 and 24. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, San Diego. Back here at home, the weather playing a factor in a traffic crash that sent a man to the hospital. It happened on the southwest side on Tedder during thunderstorms last night. Police say a man working for a remodeling company ran out into the street to roll up the windows to his vehicle when he slipped and fell on the wet pavement. That's when another driver came by and hit him. The driver did stop to call for help. The victim was taken to the hospital in serious condition. The driver is not expected to face charges. A back the blue rally showing support for law enforcement happening at a restaurant off Redland Road drew some protesters last night. Now the clash of events comes as some officers have been implicated in instances of police brutality. The protesters say the deaths of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, among others, have led to calls to defund the police. 437, 76 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, a first look at some of the secrets to getting a lot of money for your used car. And next, latest on a drone that possibly invaded the airspace of Air Force One earlier this week. And taking a look outside with live cam in August, we are lucky with that 76 degrees. Not too bad, not too bad as far as humidity goes. And a lot of people got some rain, including our Marcus Trujillo. We're gonna talk with Mike in just a bit. Four forty in your morning headlines. U.S. military investigating a report of a possible drone flying way too close to Air Force One. People reportedly saw an object flying as the president's aircraft was landing at Joint Base Andrews on Sunday. A witness says it was in the air a short distance below and to the side of the plane. A drone coming close to Air Force One is a major security breach. They're banned in the restricted national security airspace around Washington, D.C. The White House has declined to comment. A U.S. official says a sensor system would have detected an unauthorized airborne object. And after reviewing the initial feeds, the computers didn't show anything, but they are still investigating. The bulls are back on Wall Street. The stock market will open today after hitting its first record close since the pandemic started. Tuesday's stock session unofficially ended the bear market by one measure. That makes the COVID bear market the shortest in history at just 1.1 months. Meanwhile, uh, the NASDAQ composite gained 81 points. The Dow is the odd index out, losing 66 points due to losses in the energy and financial sectors. The U.S. Postal Service pausing changes that have slowed mail deliveries, delivery rather, such as removing sorting machines and cutting overtime. Postmaster General says they'll put on hold uh, those changes until after the 2020 election. Numerous states saying they're planning on filing, filing federal lawsuits aimed at reversing those recent changes. Some Democratic leaders accuse the USPS of undermining mail-in voting, which President Trump has frequently blasted. In addition to concerns about voting by mail, some say the operational changes have hindered mail delivery. 
And time now, 442 and 76 degrees. Still ahead, which laundry detergent is best to use? May not be the one that smells the very best. We have the results from a new consumer report. And are you thinking about selling your, your used car for cash? What you need to know before you sell in order to get the most money. And do you need a few extra dollars? ABC's Gio Benitez has more information about cashing in and getting big money for your used car. In this morning's GMA First Look, the secrets to getting big bucks for your used car. With used car sales soaring from coast to coast during the pandemic, some dealerships are trying to up their inventory by handing over cash. If we paid you 15000 for that truck last year, we would write a check for 20000 this time this year. So we went to the experts to find out how you can cash in. You know, the key thing with getting the most for it, I think, is to shop around. And different states have different perks. In some states, you get a, uh, like a tax break on the sales tax for that trade. So, for example, here in New Jersey, if I were to buy a $30,000 car and I trade in a $10,000 car, I only pay tax on $20,000. We'll share even more tips on how to get the best offer for your car, and it's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. When it comes to laundry detergent, some people go for the deals and others are lured by the scents or promises of cleaning magic. And Consumer Reports put several to the test. 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris on how it all came out in the wash. The Foster family does a lot of laundry. With a newborn and toddler, the messes add up. It feels like it's never ending. It, and I feel like, where did all these clothes come from? To help get the job done right, Consumer Reports tested dozens of detergents. We used fabric swatches soaked with tough stains like blood, dirt, grass, coffee. And then we use each detergent to see how well that detergent gets the stain out. They also checked how well a detergent acts as a pre-treater for stains. In our tests, the detergents that earn excellent ratings will tackle pretty normal stains like body oil and dirt. But they're also going to tackle things that are a bit tougher like grass or blood. The results, the top ratings all went to liquids, Tide Plus Ultra Stain release at 28 cents a load, or Persil ProClean Fighter for 21 cents a load. If you have sensitive skin, they recommend Persil ProClean Sensitive Skin. And this Kirkland Signature Ultra Clean Liquid from Costco is the best value at only 11 cents a load. If you prefer the convenience of pods though, these powder pods from Tide at 67 cents a load scored the best, though pods are not recommended recommended for homes with young children who may ingest them. Plus, pods can't pre-treat, a priority at this house. We do find ourselves <laughs> yes. having to remove stains a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. I have to pre-treat a lot. Hey, it's what happens when you have a kid in the house, right? <laughs> That's very true. I remember those days. Let's check on traffic right now with Officer Marcus Trujillo. Any updates for that incident on 410, or are we clear, Marcus? That accident is clear, Mark, so a smooth sailing can be expected. Let's go back to Transguide. 410, 281 area, you see no issues out there. Uh, no one on the ramps, but it is early. Maybe that's why. Just the four of us here are awake right now. <laughs> 281 Hildebrand, north and southbound lanes. Uh, moving along, there's more than enough room out there. No problems there at 35 at Evanston. Look at 410 and Callahan. Still running great right now. Uh, moving over to 410 and Ingram. No delays at this time. Thank you, Marcus. Well, uh, it was another afternoon with the skies darkened for some folks and extreme downpours again, Mike. Yeah, you know, we those those glitches move on through here. They touch off some of those, and I call them glitches because you know, it's just these little impulses moving in this, uh, this northerly flow that we've had, and you get some really, really decent downpours as you were talking about, and boy, they were so close to my house, and I can almost smell the rain, but nothing, darn it. But look at this in Cuero. 1.9 inches of rain. Man, that's nice. There could be one or two more of them later on this afternoon. We still have the kind of the same overall weather pattern. Uh, don't get your hopes too high for any rain, but if you do get some, who knows? Your backyard rain gauge could be filling up nicely. Nice view of downtown as of right now and high temperatures yesterday. Yeah, right before those storms kind of moved on into the area and the clouds moved on in here, temperatures decided to spike in town up in New Braunfels, Gonzales, 103 and some 104s out there. And later on today, we are in store for more 
more triple digit readings. We are looking at some low hundreds around most all of the area again, but the humidity should be held in check. The other reason why we got so hot is right before those uh, storms moved on through the humidity just really kind of took a nosedive and so that dry air heats up very, very quickly. So this is the satellite picture going back another uh, going back 12 hours and again right in the afternoon all of a sudden these things just started to really bloom that line that moved on through here. Sun went down, everything sort of fizzled on out. Nothing's out there right now. But computer models now are not as aggressive with this today. As a matter of fact, if you kind of blink and I stop this every couple of hours, but here's one or two of them out there and even in toward dinner time, one or two of them and that'll be the situation in through the early evening hours. That's pretty much about it. I mean, it's going to be very, very few and far between, if anything. Perhaps one or two of them tomorrow, just because we still have this northerly flow in the atmosphere, which means it is still going to stay on the comfortable side as far as humidity is concerned. That's what's also allowing temperatures to get so hot. So we stay in the uh, triple digit range all the way through the rest of the week. And I'm going for upper 90s this weekend. All right, tropics, we're still looking at these two systems out here, one in the Caribbean and this one in the middle of the Atlantic. This has a better chance of actually turning into something, but also we're still thinking there's still indications that these are going to be working their way basically to the west and coming in our vicinity. Most are going to be making sort of a dog leg up to the right and up to the north, but uh, should give us a chance for some rain as this moves in here a little bit closer by about Tuesday of next week. I don't know. It's a great rain chance, but at least again, that's a, another rain chance around here. 94 today at noon, mostly sunny skies, 100 for a high temperature today, mostly sunny, a stray shower, stray being the operative word in this forecast. Tomorrow, Friday, triple digit heat and 99s over the weekend. A couple of more clouds moving in here, maybe late Sunday, Monday, and a couple of showers around on Tuesday. So still hot. It's still hopeful. Correct. <laughs> Sizzling like our sun down oh, there on yeah. the. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Very Thank appropriate. You. Thank you, Mike. 451, 76 degrees. And coming up next, a first look at the box office as some of the major movie theaters get set to reopen this weekend for the first time in months. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, five, two, three, fireball three, and daily four numbers, five, eight, five, nine, fireball two. Cash five, 13, 14, 24, 28, 32. And your Mega Millions, 4, 18, 26, 27, 58, Mega Ball 23, Mega Plier 4. Good luck. Just about 5 till 5, a big shakeup at NBC and many major movie theaters are set to reopen this weekend. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Romina Puga. According to court documents, after 12 years, Britney Spears no longer wants her father, Jamie Spears, to be in control of her conservatorship. The new paperwork gives the public a rare peek at the 38-year-old pop star's wishes, asking to make her temporary conservator, Jody Montgomery, a permanent replacement for her father. But Britney also says in the document that doesn't mean she's waiving her right to seek an end to the entire arrangement, which since 2008 has given her father control of her career and personal life, including giving her ex-husband, Kevin Federline, custody of their sons. Ron Meyer, the number two at NBC Universal and co-founder of CAA, is leaving the company after disclosing an affair and extortion attempt. Meyer says he received threats of extortion following a settlement with the woman with whom he says he once had a brief and consensual affair. He was head of Universal Studios since 1995, then becoming NBC Universal's vice chairman. The threat we face. And Christopher Nolan's new film Tenet will be the first major Hollywood movie to be released in select open theaters since the start of the pandemic. Many domestic theaters are reopening this week with AMC and Regal opening their doors before the weekend. Tenet will screen in select theaters August 31st and then open more widely September 3rd. That's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Romina Puga for ABC News. And time now, 456 and 76 degrees for now. Still ahead, Joe Biden formally captured the Democratic presidential nomination during the virtual convention last night. We'll take a look at what's next for the nominee. And Netflix testing out a brand new feature with some of its viewers. We're going to tell you about it just ahead in Tech Bites. Former Vice President Joe Biden officially becoming the Democratic nominee for president. I'm Inez de la Quatera in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up.
Plus, San Antonio officials announced local voting plans ahead of November's presidential election. And taking a look outside with live cam, a very nice 75 degrees for now. A lot of people got some rain yesterday. I didn't see it, but it was nice that it's in our area, right? Close, but no <laughs> we'll cigar for some of us, right? <laughs> right? Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. It is August 19th. And yeah, mid 70s, not too shabby this morning. Yeah, not too bad. Thanks for joining us, by the way. I was going to tell you that last night it was nice. So I was very thankful to have, you know, overcast weather. But then my mom called, it's pouring over here. I heard, yeah. <laughs> With the big storm, I uh, had some friends report in from over by SeaWorld, Mike Coast page of a huge downpour yesterday afternoon. Me and Stephanie were in the same boat. Yeah, then nothing. It, it looked like, smelled like it. The clouds moved on in, the wind shifted around, and my phone was telling me there was rain in the area, but nothing out there for me. But some folks, yeah, picked up a couple of inches of rain. So once again, we had some nice hefty downpours. 75 in town, mid 60s in parts of the hill country and that top number that's not bad 66 for a dew point so what's interesting is we really don't have much of a heat index to deal with as of right now it was the first time we said that in the morning in a long time the aquifer took a big hit yesterday of course the 10-day average keeps going on down and mold is on the high side so heat index readings you saw the current temperature is at 75 and that's what it feels like out there because the air is dry enough so your your body can kind of cool itself fairly efficiently. And during the afternoon yesterday, um, right before some of those thunderstorms moved on through here, the humidity, if you notice, you stepped outside and even if you were in the shade, it was fairly comfortable out there because the dew points really dropped down. And so we didn't have much of a heat index, heat index to deal with. It was just plain old hot in places. And again, that's what allowed temperatures to really shoot up. And that's going to be the situation again today because we are going to be hot again today, getting up to 100. By the way, we hit 103 yesterday. A stray shower is still possible today. Um, not very likely, but there is that chance because we've got kind of the same weather pattern that we've had the past few days. Sunny, hot, um, yeah, you can't completely rule out a stray shower tomorrow. Still hot over the weekend. I think we'll stay in the upper 90s. A little bit better chance of some rain maybe moving into the first part of next week. More on that coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. I know you're talking about an incident last half hour. Is that still the case? Uh, no, sir. That has cleared out of the way, so we have no incidents out there. Take a look at the map showing green in all directions, all the main lanes. So if you have to be up this early and about, Headed to your morning destination. Right now is a great time to get out there. You see, as you can see here, 410 at New Braunfels. No problems there. Moving over to 37 and 9th North and South on lanes. Still running smoothly this morning. Checking on 1604 Bandera Road. So far, uh, less than a handful of vehicles out there right now. Marcus Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. A close call for a woman who was lying in the middle of the Interstate 37 just east of downtown overnight. Police say around 1130 last night, a tow truck driver saw that woman on the highway near Commerce Street. Police say that's when he swerved to avoid hitting her. When he stopped to help the woman off the highway, he found she had two broken legs. Emergency crews responded and she was taken to the hospital in stable condition. Police are now trying to figure out how she got in the middle of the highway. Unbelievable story. Well, day two of the virtual Democratic National Convention, which Joe Biden officially became the party's nominee. Democrats are now hard at work to show he can appeal to a large number of supporters. ABC's Ines de la Quatera is in Washington with the latest. Very, very much. Former Vice President Joe Biden officially becoming the Democratic nominee for president. With his wife, Dr. Joe Biden, by his side, closing out the second night of a virtual DNC. The heart of this nation still beats with kindness and courage. That's the soul of America Joe Biden is fighting for now. From former President Bill Clinton. The difference is stark. You know what Donald Trump will do with four more years? Blame, bully, and belittle. And you know what Joe Biden will do? Build back better. To the 17 rising star Democrats that spoke in lieu of a traditional keynote address. Democrats working hard to show that the party is united and calling members of all groups and ages to get out and vote. I've been doing this for a long time, so let me just be plain. Black people, especially black women, are the backbone of this party. And if we don't show up, Democrats don't get elected. 
for a second night, the party also making a point to feature Republicans, like former George W. Bush Secretary of State Colin Powell, who threw his support behind Biden. Our country needs a commander in chief who takes care of our troops in the same way he would his own family. And Cindy McCain speaking in a touching video about Biden's friendship with her late husband, Republican Senator John McCain. They would just sit and joke. It was like a comedy show sometimes to watch the two of them. Meanwhile, President Trump trying to distract attention from the Democrats out on the stump in critical swing states. This election that we're going into is the most important election in the history of our country. Because we had crooked Hillary, but this is something these people are sick. Tonight, it'll be former President Barack Obama's turn to speak. A spokesperson tells ABC News he plans to warn that democracy itself is on the line and outline why Biden and his running mate Kamala Harris have the character and experience needed to lead America out of the COVID-19 crisis. Inez Deliquitera, ABC News, Washington. Well, Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf announcing plans ahead of November's presidential election. Not only do they involve mail in ballot applications, but also mega voting sites. Judge Wolf says they've nailed down three of the four sites. So far, they include the AT&T Center, where Spurs staff are set to help with elections operations. Mission Concepcion Sports Com Complex and the Alzafar Shrine Temple are also listed. Commissioners also hope to get a location in District 2. All the locations will have room to spread out and practice social distancing while voting this season. It's in addition to the regular 40 to 50 voting sites planned. Wolf also acknowledged some postal problems and says the county is looking to delivering mail-in ballot applications to 250,000 people 65 and older in Bear County. The reason we moved quicker today is so that the sooner we can get the applications in the mail, that gives the post office more time to, to um, uh, return them and get them back to us. So that's why we're jumping out ahead. Judge Wolf says they plan on paying for the postage both to and from, but are looking to see how much it would cost. The judge is hoping to have a decision made by next Tuesday. And Lavernia ISD starting their 2020 school year today. Lavernia ISD is holding in-person classes on their first day. On their website, the district announcing it will monitor the ongoing pandemic in South Texas and make any adjustments as they see fit. And district officials say they have resources available for parents so they know when to keep their kids home and when they might be at risk for COVID-19. Right, good luck to everybody there at Lavernia ISD. In other headlines, one San Antonio woman participating in an all women flyover Friday is encouraging all women young and old to reach for the stars. 22 year old Lacey Law joining three other women for the 100th celebration of the 19th Amendment. She says her passion for flying started with a research on Amelia Earhart, an aviation pioneer who was the first woman to fly over the Atlantic Ocean solo. Law says she gives credit to the women in the past who fought to make careers like hers possible for women to have. Respect their fight and what they've done for you to have these opportunities. Um, try to honor them to the best of your ability, uh, work hard, and then just don't underestimate your hard work and confidence or dedication, you know, to achieve whatever your goal may be. The flyover will start at 11 a.m. I believe we said this is Friday at Stinson Field, and then we'll go over the Alamo City to learn more about the flight path and other pilots participating. Go to our website at ksat.com. Very cool. Something to look forward to on Friday. That's right. 508, 75 degrees on your Wednesday. And still ahead, a look at how Google Maps is being redesigned to make it easier to use. Next, need a new job? Bud Light has a unique position promoting its new seltzer. We're going to tell you about that. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, 75 degrees, lower humidity. You know what? We'll take it when you step outside. It will not be as bad as it has been in the past. Uh, but Mike's going to be talking about triple digits again. We'll be right back. Any morning consumer headlines before you start thinking ahead to pumpkin spice season. Starbucks wants you to cheer the end of summer first, it's adding two new tropical green drinks to the menu permanently after what it called a successful launch in Canada earlier this summer. The Kiwi Starfruit Starbucks Refreshers beverage combines starfruit flavored juice with real pieces of kiwi hand shaken with ice. It's under 100 calories for a 16 ounce drink and the star drink is the same beverage with coconut milk. 
It's under 200 calories, same size. And we have a question for a potential new job. Are you a beer lover and do you enjoy creating memes? If you answered yes to both questions, Bud just may have a job for you. The company wants to hire a CMO, which stands for Chief Meme Officer for the Bud Light Seltzer portfolio. The low calorie beverage launched in January through September 18th. Anyone 21 or older can apply for the CMO job online and download meme templates to experiment with the job when tell creating 10 viral memes and sharing them on social media. It pays $5,000 a month for three months. Wow. Not bad. Not bad at all. Imagine <laughs> that business card. I am the CMO. CMO. Yes. Sounds important. <laughs> 513, finding the perfect living situation for older family members uh, can be overwhelming. And you have to consider factors like how much it will cost and their health care needs. Our David Sears shares a few things to keep in mind before making that life-changing decision. Although seniors have many different living options, most people choose an assisted living facility, a nursing home, or in-home care. But before making any decision about where your loved one should live, it's important to talk to them. Start off by finding out what they want their daily life to look like and what would make them the happiest. Their ideal situation might not be feasible, but having an honest conversation about their preferences will assure your loved one that they still have control over their life. According to Consumer Affairs, research shows people are more likely to be happy with their surroundings in a care facility if they had some sort of control in their decision to move there. Next, assess their living needs. It's important to figure out what's essential, whether it's help with transportation or treatment for ongoing illnesses of any kind. And finally, try to remember that as they age, they'll need more advanced care. Your initial conversation on what arrangements they prefer is also a good time to discuss long-term care in case they become incapable of making their own choices in the future. Figuring out where someone you love should live as they age can be emotionally draining. Just remember, once you have a plan in place, your loved one can focus on enjoying their life to the fullest. David Sears, KSA 12 News. Now 514, 75 degrees. And still ahead, a look at how Ellen DeGeneres is promising change after apologizing to her staff for a toxic work environment. And next, we'll tell you about a brand new feature being tested on Netflix. We're K-12, and we know that even when faced with challenges, learning doesn't stop. Teachers don't give up. Education continues to evolve. For over two decades, we've been providing tuition-free public school at home to over one million students, fueling school districts with more options, and offering private school choices for those who want them. When school is just a click away, we can bridge the gaps, empowering kids to learn anytime, any place. Education for anyone. Doing the things we love can be painful. Asper Cream's triple effect provides targeted relief. Works in minutes, lasts for hours. Love hurts. Asper Cream works. Okay, everyone. Our mission is to provide complete balanced nutrition for strength and energy. Woo! Great tasting and sure. With 9 grams of protein, 27 vitamins and minerals, and nutrients to support immune health. Netflix testing a new option for viewers just in case they don't know what they want to watch. ABC's Mono Kassar Abdi has that and more in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Netflix's new shuffle button. The company says it's now being tested by some users. The button appears on the Netflix home screen. When pressed, it allows Netflix to play content it thinks you like. No decision yet on if it will be launched publicly. Google Maps is getting more detailed. The changes are being made to make it easier to distinguish between natural features, including mountains and deserts. The new maps cover 220 countries and territories. Google says its street maps are also getting more detailed in select cities. And Elon Elon Musk is now the fourth richest person in the world. The Tesla CEO moved up the list Monday when shares of the company climbed sharply. Musk's net worth is was then estimated at nearly $85 billion. It's higher than that now because Tesla's shares rose again yesterday. And those are your tech bites. Have a great day. All right now it's 518. Let's go ahead and check traffic with Officer Marcus Trujillo. I understand that one accident we had earlier is now clear. That is cleared and out of the way, Stephanie. Right now, you're looking at uh, 35 at Brooklyn. Uh, no problems there. 10 at De Zavala, also running smoothly. Let's move over Highway 98 couples. Eastbound and westbound lanes running smoothly and no problems there. 37 at 9th Street. And then 410 at Bandera. Travel both directions, still 
no delays. Thank you, Marcus. Second day in a row. If you were lucky enough to get a storm, they were hard to miss because the sky really changed to pretty quickly. Yeah, yes, nice. and you know, it was funny, even though we had some clouds in late in the afternoon, I saw those clouds move in, smelled like rain, temperature shot up to 103, and then yes, did finally uh, drop down in some areas, and this is what uh, some folks were hoping and wishing and praying for. Please, please, please rain at my house. I think they heard me crying and praying for that rain. Too. The distant <laughs> downpour and divine. Yeah, I mean, you can see that off in the distance and not right there in the in the foreground. So great looking picture. Do us one favor, though, when you take these pictures, if you can just hold your phone sideways, please. It shows up a lot better on TV. But that's a fantastic shot there. Thank you again. Uh, we do have a nice, fairly pleasant morning. Temperatures are in the mid 70s. That's what it actually uh, feels like. We don't have enough humidity to really give us any sort of heat index. Now, later on today, we're looking at a high temperature of 100 and a lot of triple digits all around the area. And then this is what this model is forecasting for a heat index, 97 degrees, which really you think, wait a minute, how can it feel cool? Well, the uh, computer models are also indicating, and we are going to continue to see, like we saw yesterday, big drop in the uh, humidity in the afternoon with dew point temperatures really dropping down. I don't think we're going to be getting exactly down to 45. However, what this model is doing is taking this dry air and if your body cools itself that much more efficiently with the drier air, it could actually feel cooler than the actual air temperature. It's one of those days where if you were in a pool and got out, you'd actually be, be kind of chilly even with the temperature up to uh, 100. So we will have very dry air in the afternoons, but that's going to be changing as we go in toward the first of the week. And that is a good sign though, because that's also when we have the chance for some rain around here once again. Of course, we had the showers and thunderstorms yesterday, and we still have this northerly flow in the atmosphere. Obviously, this is not any sort of a uh, graphic that really kind of jumps off the, the screen at you. We have a couple of uh, showers. This one's picking up one or two of them, and this was much more aggressive yesterday, and it's really kind of backed off. Even though there will be one or two of them out there today, it's going to be few and far between, definitely at best. The high that's keeping us in the northerly flow and and with this scenario you get these little little disturbances moving on through here and so that's why there's that small small chance for a, any sort of a shower and I guess you can't completely rule out even going into the next couple of days. Then we go into the weekend and we're going to start to look out here uh, toward the tropics and there's those two systems out in one in the, the Caribbean now one in the Atlantic and right now those are both forecast to kind of move in our direction and the first one would stay a little further to the south and that's the one that would give us a chance for some rain maybe by Tuesday around here. This second one is still forecast to kind of move up into the southeastern United States and really not have that much of an impact on us. So that's really our rain chance going into Tuesday and maybe into a Wednesday. Forecast today, yeah, hope for a shower. Don't get disappointed if you don't get one because most of us won't. 94 at noon today, mostly sunny skies, and then a high temperature up to 100. Again, that stray shower here or there. Um, heat index really is not going to be a factor today, nor too much the next couple of days. It'll just be plain hot out there. 99s over the weekend and hopefully some rain by maybe late Monday, Tuesday. Yes, we hope so. Well, we've kind of milked these isolated showers and storms for a few extra days, which is kind of nice. Yeah, yeah and some true. folks have, have been milking a lot better than other folks have. <laughs> I but any, we still have the overcast. I haven't gotten any, any of the milk from these storms. <laughs> Making lemonade. Next time, next time. Next time. 523, 75 degrees. And coming up next, LeBron James giving fans a sneak peek at the Toon Squad uniform he'll be wearing in next year's Space Jam sequel. Big three numbers, 523, Fireball 3, Daily 4, 5859, five, Fireball 2. Cash 5, 13, 14, 24, 28, 32. And your Mega Millions, the lucky one here in San Antonio, 4, 18, 26, 27, 58, Mega Ball 23, Mega Plier 4. Good luck. 526, time for a look at the latest headlines from the world of entertainment. Here's CNN's Douglas Hyde with the Hollywood Minute. I can't even believe this is happening. Uh, Ellen DeGeneres just, has apologized had, to her uh, staff for the toxic work environment that led to the recent departure of three top executives on her daytime talk show. In a Zoom meeting, DeGeneres pledged to interact more with her employees to ensure there's a work culture that makes them feel happy and safe. 
LeBron James is giving fans a sneak peek at the Toon Squad uniform he'll be wearing in next year's Space Jam sequel. As you can see, it's a little more colorful than the one worn by Michael Jordan in the 1996 original. Space Jam, A New Legacy, is expected to hit theaters next summer. Sorry, girl, but I can't stay. The Rolling Stones lead Billboard's list of the top moneymakers of 2019, raking in a hefty $65 million. Ariana Grande and Elton John were the year's other top earners. The list tracks the money musical acts make from streaming, publishing, and touring. In Hollywood, I'm Douglas Hyde. I know LeBron's pumped about uh, the Space Jam sequel, but he's got bigger problems right now. Oh. Lakers lost their first round series game one to the Portland Trailblazers. Well, yesterday. maybe he'll have something to look forward to now. Yeah, he's got a lot going on right now. <laughs> 527, 75 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the United States Postal Service, finding itself signed, sealed, and delivered in the middle of a political and legal soap opera. The Republican-led Senate Intelligence Committee releasing its final report regarding the 2016 Trump campaign and possible contact with Russian operatives. Plus a look at ways we can prepare to protect our new digital lives during a disaster. We'll be right back. So folks, just now waking up, rise and shine. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is the 19th. Happy Wednesday. Thanks so much for joining us. And many of you got lucky with storms and, well, I mean, it's storms, but, you know, rain, which is a great thing to see right now. Here are their storms for a couple days in a row for some folks. What about, can we, can we eke out one more day, perhaps, Mike, please, pretty please? Yes, um, but probably fewer and further between than what we've had the past couple of days. We still have the same overall air pattern, so... Yes, we will, you know, with this northerly flow in the atmosphere, and you can see this very well in the water vapor imagery. Uh, this is what brought those little disturbances down through here. And that's the thing you almost, uh, you know, we always talk about the, this northerly flow, and you, you can't really trust it as far as uh, just being a very tranquil type pattern because just a any little glitch in the atmosphere comes racing on down here. Something develops up there to the north, and it comes on in here. But as of right now, it looks like they will be, you know, you can, maybe count the rain today on one hand any of the showers that do uh, tend to pop up 94 degrees today at noon it is going to be a hot one and by the way we did hit 103 yesterday officially out of the airport it was uh, here in new braunfels and over toward uh, gonzalez got just brutally hot yesterday afternoon. Everybody else had more clouds, stayed in the 90s yesterday, but today is going to be a hot one, mostly sunny. And, you know, I don't even have the mention of rain on this graphic, but one or two showers will be popping up out there. It's going to stay hot through the weekend and perhaps a little better chance of rain toward the first of next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Officer Marcus Trujillo has problems. Last hour or so, anything going on? Well, everything's cleared up, so all the roadways uh, look great right now. In some areas, you may see a little bit of dampness, but uh, for the most part, roads should be dry out there. Take a look at I-10 and Frio inbound and outbound lanes so far. No issues there. No delays in anyone's travel times at this point. And then 410 and Bandera so far, no delays. Stephanie? Sounds good. Thank you, Marcus. San Antonio police say he may not have been the intended target, but a man was hit by gunfire that rained down on his east side home. The victim's home in the 400 block of South Olive was one of several houses in that neighborhood hit by bullets overnight. Our Katrina Weber live at Public Safety Headquarters with that story. Now, Katrina, does it look like it was a random shooting? Well, police say it was random that that man was hit, but they believe that the shooters were aiming at one house in particular. It was a different house on his same street, and officers told us that they have been to that house several times before. They say no one was inside the targeted home at the time, but the bullets found their way into several of the neighbors' homes, including the one where the man was hit. Police say there were three shooters in all, armed with handguns and a rifle, who opened fire in the neighborhood just before one this morning. The man who was shot was sleeping at the time. He was hit in the ankle by a stray bullet, then taken to a hospital for treatment. The police say that uh, they found shell casings in the street. They say it appears the shooters tossed the rifle as they ran away. They found that in someone's driveway. The shooters were last seen climbing into a car and then driving away from that area of South Olive. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. 534 U.S. Postal Service caught in the middle of big political drama. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, the independent agency is accused of making changes that could impact mail-in voting during the pandemic.
The U.S. Postal Service pausing changes that have slowed mail delivery, such as removing sorting machines and cutting overtime. Postmaster General Louis DeJoy says they'll be put on hold until after the 2020 election. Not good enough. Not even close. And so uh, I will not rest and we will not stop in our legal efforts. This case is going forward. Numerous states say they are planning to file federal lawsuits aimed at reversing the recent changes. DeJoy, a supporter and ally of the president, says he was trying to boost the struggling Postal Service's bottom line. The post office is uh, running as well as it has in a long time. But some Democratic leaders accuse the USPS of undermining mail-in voting, which President Trump has frequently blasted. The Democrats want to make it a political issue. It's not a political issue. It's really about a correct vote. In addition to concerns about voting by mail, some say the operational changes have hindered mail delivery. The United States Postal Service should not be politicized. People rely on it for medication, um, for uh, important documents. 50% of the world's mail is sent through this institution, the U.S. Postal Service. And we are getting our posts slowed down because of things that are going on because of politics. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Here at home, the pandemic is keeping medevac crews busy across the region. Air Life flight crews report they have conducted 72 known or suspected COVID-19 transfers since March between its four bases. Most recently, they have seen an increase in its Uvalde base, many of them coming from rural hospitals. Crews have increased their safety protocols to protect themselves and to decontaminate the aircraft. The company says those strict protocols have helped to ensure that none of the flight staff have contracted the virus. We change flight suits, we wash our flight suits, we'll take a shower, and then we follow up with a call to one of our clinical directors just to go over the details of what we've uh, done to decontaminate our aircraft and our cells and then go on for the next patients. We're trying to do that as quickly as possible. Air Life staff saying their calls are about 25% higher than their typical flight volumes for this time of the year. Domino's Pizza says it's looking to hire 20,000 more workers. The pizza chain says it uh, has positions open for everything from pizza making to delivery. They're also hiring managers and assistant managers for their supply chain centers. No word on how much the jobs will pay, but the company put, boasts that a part-time position could lead to a career. According to Domino's, more than 95% of its franchise owners began as part-time workers. Time now, 537 and 75 degrees. Glad you're with us still ahead on the morning show. We all need to be prepared for natural disasters. That includes protecting our digital lives. Look at how scammers can easily take advantage of people dealing with tough times. And next, new findings on the final report on what Russia did during the 2016 presidential election campaign. And outside with live cam, we'll get an update on our Last storm chances perhaps for a little while. Mike Osterhage will have that, and we're going to check back in with Officer Marcus Trujillo. He will have time saver traffic. It's and you're watching GMSA. Hi, 40 down to the new and final report on what Russia did back in 2016. It comes from the Republican-led Senate Intelligence Committee. ABC's Chief Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas has more. The Republican led Senate Intelligence Committee releasing its final report, declaring the 2016 Trump campaign had repeated contacts with Russian operatives. Among the new findings, the report saying Paul Manafort, Trump's campaign chairman, represented a grave counterintelligence threat, determining he gave polling information to Konstantin Kalimnik, who the committee describes as a Russian intelligence officer. Polling data to a political campaign is a blueprint. It's a it's a roadmap of the entire campaign. It would be a guide for them just like it would be a guide for the campaign. Senate investigators also concerned that Manafort may have been involved in the Russian efforts to hack emails from the Democrats' 2016 presidential campaigns, emails later published by WikiLeaks. And despite President Trump's claim he didn't remember speaking to his then-advisor Roger Stone about WikiLeaks, the committee saying they believe he did. The president recently commuted Stone's sentence, prompting critics to claim it was a reward for Stone's silence. Multiple sources tell ABC News that the Senate Intelligence Committee alerted the Justice Department a year ago to concerns that several members of Trump's inner circle, including Don Jr. and Jared Kushner, misled their investigators. But they have long maintained they told the truth. Pierre Thomas, ABC News, Washington. 
541, 75 degrees. Storm season is upon us, but so are storm chasers. Disaster scammers that roll in the wake of a storm to help repair damage, then roll out with your money. After the break, what you need to know. And welcome back. Time now is 544. Have a plan, know your plan, practice your plan. We all know what we should do to stay safe from a storm, but what about a digital storm? How do we protect our digital lives during a disaster? And how do we protect them from storm relief scammers? How do we stay in control when everything feels absolutely out of control? So here are some ways to strengthen your storm strategies to save time, money, and heartache. Another tornado warning. A crisis. Prepare yourself by creating an online spreadsheet of all your important information. Keep the document locked and only share it with someone you trust. Turn on Find My iPhone and share your location with your family. These tricks will have you ready to face an emergency, but be most aware of storm chasers. Okay, let's move out, people. Let's go. Storm chasers are scammers that follow the destructive paths of disasters. These disaster artists often go door to door as contractors, insurance agents, or even FEMA reps. In a consumer report following Hurricane Sandy, 22% felt they had been exploited, always ask for identification, and never sign over any rights to your insurance claims. Always ask for invoices and pay with a credit card that offers fraud protection. Never let a contractor inspect a place you can't see. Some scammers might actually create damage to get work. And when in doubt, contact your insurance company to find companies you can trust. Be aware of crowdfunding charity scams claiming they will help affected areas, but really just pocket your cash. Always verify all information and never open suspicious emails. You can check out sites like Charity Navigator or GuideStar to find trusted places to give. Well, many uh, area kids are already back in school, most of them doing online or distance learning. And some of you have sent us some back to school pictures, but we'd like to see more. Alamo Heights, Sea Central, Edgewood, Northeast, San Antonio and Southside ISD among those that begin or have begun this week. South San Antonio and Shirt Cibolo Universal City ISD began last week. Very nice setups there. Yeah. So if you go on to the KSET Kids section of KSET.com right now, you can submit your own back to school photos. We would love to see them all. We're going to show them off coming up at 645. And parents or teachers, if you're looking for more fun educational content to help your young learner, just sign up for our KSET Kids newsletter. Right now it's 547. We're going to check traffic and we'll then talk to Mike about your forecast and the San Antonio Humane Society. But first up, Marcus. Well, thank you, Mark. And right now, still no accidents out there on the highway, so all the main lanes look great. And moving over to Trans Guide, uh, no increases in the traffic there. 410 at Bandera. We move over to 410 in Cherry Ridge, just around the bend there, just past the I 10 410 interchange. We see no issues. And then uh, 410 at Callahan, looking good. So, all in all, not a bad time out there on the roadways this morning. Sounds good. And Mike, uh, you have someone for us to meet? Yes, over there at San Antonio Humane Society. I've got to tell you about some pets that, uh, well, this is Goose, first of all. Oh, six years old. Loves two things all your attention and food. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people. Anyway, a uh, sweet little boy, I'll let you know he needs some head scratches. Butterfly is an American Terrier, American Staffordshire mix, and she is six years old. Look at that face. Really needs someone just to sit with her and just give her a little, could you right there under the chin, you yeah, scratch there, lots of treats. And for more information, of course, please visit sahumane.org, 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 226-7461. Look at all those little A kids. trio of kitties. Yeah, so if you're looking for a friend to keep you company, you know, maybe sit at the kids' feet while they're studying at home. Good idea. I don't know whether they're the Humane Society. So, hey, yesterday we had some pretty good storms that popped up in the afternoon, and... Then, boy, the sunset and some of those clouds out there it was an absolutely beautiful, beautiful evening. And it was very comfortable yesterday evening. Same thing with this morning. The humidity is not bad. So 75, as you see in the bottom of your screen right there, feels like 75 degrees. We don't have much of a heat index to deal with. We had those thunderstorms that uh, popped up around the area. Didn't get nothing at my house. And a certain gentleman wearing a San Antonio police officer uniform two days in a row now. Yes. Two. Let's make it three. 
Okay, work on traffic. Don't don't rub it in. <laughs> and uh, we might have one or two of them later on today, but the odds, we still have this northerly flow in the atmosphere, but the chances are not that great. We get these little disturbances trying to move on through here, but as you can see, this model has one or two of them trying to pop up again. And if you do get one of these showers, you could have some decent, uh, a decent little downpour and those will last into the evening hours and that's pretty much going to be about it. All right, out there in the tropics, we've got two areas that we've been watching and the hurricane center is watching these. This one probably has the better chance of starting to uh, develop into something, but then also that one there in the Caribbean. And as far as the uh, hurricane center is concerned, we have got the paths, the spaghetti models are taking both of these almost straight to the west. This one goes into just about the Yucatan. And again, most models have this kind of curving up to the north a little bit. Some keep it a little further to the south. And this second one is the one that's got the better chance of developing into something that looks like it's going to be heading into Florida. Now, as far as anything to benefit us, the first low that's going to be moving on in here should be close enough to give us a chance for some rain by about Tuesday. Uh, this other one looks like it's going to be diverted further up there to the north, so that's not going to be doing too much of anything as far as we are concerned. Obviously, both of these are something that's going to be watched because, you know, that's not until the middle of next week, so a lot can change between now and then, but a small chance as far as those are concerned, but not a great chance for any rain from those. So the forecast today are going to be up to 94 degrees at noon, mostly sunny skies, and then a high temperature today. It's going to be another hot one, 100, mostly sunny. A stray shower is possible. Again, hope for the best, but expect just hot conditions out there, although the humidity is not going to be too bad, so it'll feel uh, comfortable if you're in the shade. And then, yes, Marcus, and then over the next couple of days, he was just rubbing it in that he got more rain again in the past couple of days. 99s over the weekend and a chance for some rain <laughs> by, say, about Tuesday. I know Marcus is feeling pretty lucky about yeah. that rain two yeah. days. I mean, one, he would have been happy with two. He's absolutely have three fingers going. Yeah, do you see him right row, there? So. He's, he's tic -tac going for toe. three. Mm -hmm. Tic-tac-toe, tic we need the third one. You're going to be that greedy with the rain, huh? Okay. <laughs> Calls it the trifecta of precipitation. <laughs> 551, 75 degrees. And coming up next, a bar with an iconic name is the latest business that's closing because of COVID-19. More details next. Lottery numbers, pick three, five, two, three, fireball three, daily four, five, eight, five, nine, fireball two. Cash five, we have 13, 14, 24, 28, 32. And Mega Millions, that's the one that a lot of people here in San Antonio get lucky with. So here are the numbers for 18, 26, 27, 58, Mega Ball 23, Mega Plier 4. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up here on a Wednesday on GMA, we're going to have the latest on night two of the virtual Democratic convention. Democrats formally nominating Joe Biden for president. Big speeches from por former President Bill Clinton and former Secretary of State Colin Powell showing his support from the Republican side. Dr. Jill Biden will join us right after her personal speech making the case for her husband, and you'll see it here on GMA. Right now on KSAT.com, Tejano singer Ramoneta speaks about the loss of his mother and brother this summer. After the coronavirus pandemic hit, performances stopped for Herrera. In May, his mother died. In June, he and his entire family tested positive for the virus. And last month, his brother died of the virus. Herrera spoke with KSAT.com in an exclusive interview about the two losses and how hard it's been for his family. The losses inspired Herrera to get back into the recording booth and record the popular Christian song, I Can Only Imagine. The song has since been released and can be heard on Christian and Tejano radio stations. For more on Herrera's interview and to listen to the song, just head to our website. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. 
Well, for tourists, it's time to find another bar where everyone knows your name. The Cheers Bar in Boston closing after 20 years. This particular location built to mimic the fictional bar in the popular TV show. The owner says the doors officially close August 30th. He is blaming the landlord for refusing to forgive rent when they were shut down from March to June during the pandemic. The original location on Boston's Beacon Street, which inspired the show, is still remaining open. Right now it's 557. You're watching GMSA on a Wednesday morning. Still ahead, getting older means facing new realities, and that could mean accepting help from others more often. Just ahead, we'll take a look at ways to cope with losing some independence. And Officer Marcus Terhe, our traffic experts, tracking traffic with the help of Transguy. We'll get updated on that and your Wednesday forecast. Your top stories still to come right here on Good Morning San Antonio. Stick around. A man on the east side waking up overnight when a bullet hit him in the ankle. Right now, police say they found the gun, but not the shooter. Fire crews on the scene of a large fire in Grand Prairie. That fire has been burning for a few hours now. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. We are so lucky. It is 74 degrees and that humidity, not so bad. And a good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is August 19th. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Glad we made it to Wednesday and it's very nice 74. And as Marcus would say, let's check you with Mike, Mike, Mike. <laughs> yeah, we're actually below the normal low temperature and I can't even remember the last time that happened. We got down to 74 degrees and with the humidity being on the low side, it, yeah, it is not bad when you step outside this morning. We're not seeing any glow yet. It's going to be another hour until the sun thinks about uh, waking up and Crawling out of bed and satellite radar composite over the past 12 hours. Yes, we had some of those beautiful showers and a few thunderstorms around yesterday. A lot of folks got some rain. Most of us did not see rain and even fewer of us are going to be seeing any sort of rain today. There's still a chance for one or two of those showers, but very, very small chance. Uh, temperatures will stay right around low to mid 70s throughout the rest of the morning, and then we warm up very quickly. The dry air warms up quite quickly, so we're going to be gaining a good 25 degrees at least throughout most of the day up in the mid 90s today at noon, and we'll top off right around 100. And yes, there is that uh, small chance for a couple of showers later on today. Not not much. Get used to the triple digits, though. That's going to be the situation over the next few days. Weekend forecast is coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Officer Marcus Trujillo, and I'm not seeing anything in the map. All clear? Things look great right now. Now, we had that accident earlier this morning when we first started. That's cleared out of the way. Traffic resumed uh, back to its normal pace along 410 in both directions up on the northeast side. Now, other areas look great right now, so no delays in anyone's travel times. I-10 days of all inbound outbound lanes so far. No problems all the way in through I-10. 10 at Frio. Mark. Thank you, sir. New this morning, San Antonio police are searching for three shooters on the city's east side. The suspects say that rather the suspect shot at several homes in the 400 block of Olive Street right around 1230 this morning. That's just blocks away from the Alamo Dome. Officers say a man was sleeping in one of those houses and a bullet hit him in the ankle. They also say they found a rifle down the street and believe one of the shooters tossed it away. Victim is expected to recover. Our Katrina Weber will have more on this story coming up in our very next half hour. Police are also searching for two men involved in a carjacking on the city's northwest side. Officers tell us it happened before 11 last night in the parking lot of a convenience store off of WW White Road. Now, police say three men stole the car at gunpoint and drove off. An officer later found the man and attempted to stop the vehicle, but the suspects led them on a chase. It ended in a crash near I-10 and Martin Luther King. Officers tell us they arrested one man, but the other two are still on the run. Listen to this. San Antonio police investigating why a woman was found crawling in the middle of Interstate 37. It happened around 1130 last night at 37 and Commerce Street, right here in the downtown area. Police say a tow truck driver saw the woman in the middle of the freeway and pulled over to help her. And that's when he noticed the woman had two broken legs. She was taken to the hospital in stable condition. The tow truck driver is not facing any charges. 
And we have a developing story right now in Grand Prairie, Texas, in between Dallas and Fort Worth. Emergency crews are on the scene of a large industrial building fire, WFAA in Dallas, reporting that it is the Poly America factory. The station reporting the fire is about as big as a football field and several fire departments and an airport foam sprayer on the scene. Meteorologists at WFAA say the smoke plume was so large it lowered temperatures in the area. Wow. Right now, local officials still don't know what caused it. And we'll keep an eye on that big fiver up there in the Metroplex. Here closer to home, Lavernia ISD teachers and students go back to school this morning and they will be in classes in person. District posted on a website that it's following all the guidelines from the TEA. They'll also monitor the pandemic and make adjustments as needed throughout the school year. Lavernia ISD also has resources for parents to help navigate them through the year with the threat of COVID-19. Many more districts start this upcoming Monday. Judson, Harlandale, Somerset, New Braunfels, Southwest, and our biggest district, Northside ISD, all start classes on Monday the 24th. Be sure to check with your local district or school to see if classes will be in person, virtual, or a possible hybrid. Good luck to all the kiddos, teachers, and the parents this year. And as the school year starts and continues, KSET will track the latest developments that could impact your child to see our latest headlines about the new school year and how COVID-19 is impacting it. Just head to the back to school page of KSET.com. Indeed, we've got you covered. 605 Bear County health officials say 20 more people have died and there are 143 new COVID-19 cases in our community. The deaths were announced last night happened between June 23rd and August 13th. There are 265 deaths still under investigation. Metro Health says hospital numbers continue to improve and we're at a moderate risk level now. However, local officials say if proper guidelines are not followed. Cases could still increase because there obviously still no vaccine. Doctors in the U.S. are urging state governments to use testing data as a roadmap for reopening. However, health officials say many of those critical results may not be accurate. Here's ABC's Megan Tavrizian. This morning, new concerns about faulty coronavirus test results. The FDA revealing Tuesday that one of the most widely used tests could be giving invalid or false negative results. The administration also warning that the tests produced by Thermo Fisher Scientific are vulnerable to false negatives if the samples aren't properly processed. The trouble is there are areas of the country, several, that are actually in community spread. It comes as states grapple with how to stop the virus from spreading. You go in, people get infected, boom, they close them down. In New York City, people coming in from states on the travel advisory list must sign a quarantine form at hotels and short-term rentals before they're issued keys. Hawaii is now postponing tourism until October 1st. Schools across the country are struggling with how to move forward, too. Iowa State finding 175 cases in its first week after testing students moving into residence halls. Students my age don't really take it seriously or as seriously as it needs to be taken. The University of Alabama announcing fans will be able to watch football games in person, despite students warning that social distancing is already being ignored by their classmates. And at Notre Dame, students are under two weeks of new restrictions after finding 89 new cases on Monday alone. Most of those infections now trace back to off-campus parties. We can't have these large parties because of the level of asymptomatic spread. Off-campus parties also to blame for a cluster at the University of Tennessee and North Carolina State. 14% of North Carolina's total cases are now among people aged between 18 and 24. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, San Diego. Wednesday morning time check 607 74 degrees. A group of pilots will fly over San Antonio commemorating the ratification of the 19th Amendment to the Constitution, giving women the right to vote. We will hear from one of the pilots in the all women flight crew. Finding a place for older family members can be difficult. We'll have some ways to choose the right place in their senior years after the break. And taking a look outside with live cam. Beautiful. It is nice. We love that 74 degrees. Poor Mike didn't get any rain yesterday. We're going to keep our fingers crossed for him for today. But is it gonna... really poor Mike? <laughs> oh, it is. Yes. Okay, thank he you, Mike. Yes. yes. <laughs> we'll be right back.
And welcome back. It is 611. Finding the perfect living situation for older family members can be overwhelming. Absolutely overwhelming. You have to consider factors like how much it costs and, of course, their health care needs. David Sears shares a few things to keep in mind before making that life changing decision. Although seniors have many different living options, most people choose an assisted living facility, a nursing home, or in-home care. But before making any decision about where your loved one should live, it's important to talk to them. Start off by finding out what they want their daily life to look like and what would make them the happiest. Their ideal situation might not be feasible, but having an honest conversation about their preferences will assure your loved one that they still have control over their life. According to Consumer Affairs, research shows people are more likely to be happy with their surroundings in a care facility if they had some sort of control in their decision to move there. Next, assess their living needs. It's important to figure out what's essential, whether it's help with transportation or treatment for ongoing illnesses of any kind. And finally, try to remember that as they age, they'll need more advanced care. Your initial conversation on what arrangements they prefer is also a good time to discuss long-term care in case they become incapable of making their own choices in the future. Figuring out where someone you love should live as they age can be emotionally draining. Just remember, once you have a plan in place, your loved one can focus on enjoying their life to the fullest. David Sears, KSA 12 News, 613. How are things looking right now with traffic, Marcus? Well, they were looking pretty good. Now we're getting reports of a possible uh, major accident uh, over on the east side, I-10 WW White area. So that's going to be right in that vicinity right there. So we'll check on that, see if that causes any delays for folks. But currently, uh, other areas looking pretty good. 21 Hill to Red, north and south on lanes, no issues. 35 at uh, Evans, you can see tra moving, traffic moving along fairly well all the way in through the downtown area. Thank you very much, Marcus. Mike, what's happening over in your neck of the woods? Well, we have hot, some hot temperatures. Actually, it's very pleasant when you step outside this morning, by the way, and uh, temperatures are in the uh, about to mid 70s right now. We are going to be warming up once the sun pops up. It's going to warm up fairly quickly and we'll be up to uh, right around 98 after school and then top off just about uh, 100. There is the slight chance for a shower later on today. Not really a great chance, but you know, one or two of them out there. I think even a, a lesser chance than what we had today. Uh, beautiful view of the uh, river walk downtown. Very pretty. Once again, if you could turn your camera sideways, that would really help out. But thank you very much for the uh, KSAT Connect picture. And no glow yet. We've still got about 45 minutes until the sun thinks about coming up over the horizon. Of course, yesterday we had some of those really nice uh, showers and thunderstorms out there, and they died down once the sun went down. And anything that does pop up today. That's going to be the situation as well. But this computer model now yesterday it was a little more uh, bullish, if you will, as far as uh, chances for some rain. And as you can see today, I mean, yeah, one or two of them out there. I think we're going to be counting the uh, showers basically on one hand today, and that will pretty much be about it. Now, as we go on further into the future, um, well, really nothing around uh, that much today, nor tomorrow, nor really on Friday, perhaps a couple of extra clouds hanging around here. Um, a few more clouds going into the weekend, but as we go in toward Monday, Notice how this rain starts to work its way on in here. That's coming in, obviously, from the Gulf of Mexico. And those two systems that are in the, uh, the one in the Caribbean, one in the Atlantic as of right now. And they are forecast to work their way into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, the, it's still a week away, of course, and the exact location where they end up is a little bit iffy. Here's what... Uh, this long range model looks like the high is still dominating things. It keeps us in this northerly flow, so that keeps the chance of, uh, you know, one or two little glitches moving down through here for a shower. That's possible. Not very likely, though. We uh, keep the same scenario going in toward the weekend. And then as we go into the first part of the week, these lows start to work their way in here. And one is going to be probably staying a little further to the south. And the other one right now looks like it's going to be taking a uh, sort of a right hand turn and going up into the northeastern or excuse me, in the southeastern United States. Again, a lot can change between now and then, but that's what it's looking like as of right now. Small rain chances as of right now.
for about Tuesday of next week. 94 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies, and then we'll top off at 100 today and talk about small rain chances. Yeah, a stray shower or two is possible today, although not very likely. But like yesterday, if you do happen to get one of those uh, showers or a thunderstorm, could have a couple of decent downpours around the area. Temperatures, lows right around normal, highs on the above normal side all the way through the weekend through the week into the weekend and then uh, right around upper 90s towards the first part of next week. Uh, here's the good news. We're headed into the latter half of the month of August now for South Texas, which is a start. Right, and normal high temperatures will continue to drop a little bit. We're supposed to be at 6, 96 right now, but of course, that's the average. Right. But we'll see some 90s next no. week. Looking forward to that. Right. right. Thank you, Mike. 617, 74 degrees. And used car sales are booming right now. Dealerships across the nation are trying to up their inventory. In today's GMA First Look, we're going to see how that could mean getting a lot of money for your trade-in. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a free iced coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. It's starting to happen every day. People are surprising themselves. The moment they realize they can do more with less asthma. Thanks to Dupixent, the add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma. Dupixent isn't for sudden breathing problems. It can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and help prevent severe asthma attacks. It's not a steroid, but can help reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Dupixent can cause serious allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. Get help right away if you have rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection. And don't change or stop your asthma treatments, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Do more with less asthma. Talk to your doctor today about Dupixent. If your financial situation has changed, we may be able to help. In this morning's GMA First Look, the secrets to getting big bucks for your used car. With used car sales soaring from coast to coast during the pandemic, some dealerships are trying to up their inventory by handing over cash. If we paid you 15000 for that truck last year, we would write a check for 20000 this time this year. So we went to the experts to find out how you can cash in. You know, the key thing with getting the most for it, I think, is to shop around. And different states have different perks. In some states, you get a, uh, like a tax break on a sales tax for that trade. So for example, here in New Jersey, if I were to buy a $30,000 car and I trade in a $10,000 car, I only pay tax on $20,000. We'll share even more tips on how to get the best offer for your car, and it's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Time now is 621. In your morning consumer news, Uber says it may put the brakes on its service in California as early as tomorrow. This comes after a state court gave Uber 10 days last week to reclassify its drivers as employees. The drivers are currently contractors, meaning they do not get benefits such as minimum wage or paid sick leave. Uber said it is appealing that decision. Netflix has a new shuffle button. The company says it's now being tested by some users. The button appears on the Netflix home screen. When pressed, it allows Netflix to play content it thinks you will enjoy. They have not decided if it will be launched publicly. Google Maps is getting more detailed. The changes hope to make it easier to distinguish between natural features, including mountains and deserts. The new maps cover 220 countries and territories. Google says its street maps are also getting more detailed in select cities. Elon Musk now the fourth richest person on the entire planet. Tesla CEO move up to list Monday when shares of the company rose sharply. Musk's net worth now estimated at nearly $85 billion. Oh my goodness. <laughs> And one San Antonio woman encouraging all women, young and old, to reach for the stars. 22-year-old Lacey Law joining three other women for a flyover above San Antonio Friday to commemorate the centennial of the ratification of the 19th Amendment to the Constitution. She says her passion for flying started with research on Amelia Earhart, an aviation pioneer, the first woman to fly over the Atlantic by herself. 
Law credits women who fought to make it possible for other women to have careers that were once exclusive to men. Respect their fight and what they've done for you to have these opportunities. Um, try to honor them to the best of your ability, uh, work hard, and then just don't underestimate your hard work and confidence or dedication, you know, to achieve whatever your goal may be. The flyover will start around 11 in the morning on Friday at the Stinson Municipal Airport. To learn about the flight path and the other pilots participating, you can go to our website at KSA.com. Very exciting. Just about 624, 74 degrees on your Wednesday. The Democratic Party officially nominated Joe Biden and Kamala Harris for their presidential ticket at the National Convention. Today, Senator Harris expected to accept the nomination after big name Democrats endorsed the running mate. Trans guide Marcus is keeping an eye on things as we speak. He'll have an update coming up live right here on KSAT. We'll be right back. You're watching GMSA. Bullets find their way inside the home of an east side man overnight, sending him to the hospital. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you why police say he wasn't the intended target. Former Vice President Joe Biden officially becoming the Democratic nominee for president. I'm Inez de la Quatera in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. Outside with live cam, you've seen this uh, very beginning of our Wednesday morning sunrise. It's looking great out there. A few straggling clouds, and we had a few more showers and storms around yesterday. Do we get one more little chance? We can milk this as long as we can. We're going to talk to Mike in just a moment. It is Wednesday, the 19th of August. Thanks for joining us today. And yesterday I was outside and it was nice. So I didn't see rain. However, my mom calls me. I'm outside. She's like, it's pouring over here. Oh, a lot there of people got that big storms. Uh, I know there was one over Alamo Ranch SeaWorld late yesterday into the evening hours. But I mean, again, picture perfect this morning, Mike. Yeah, this is nice. And it also feels nice when you step outside. Once again, we've got uh, low enough humidity. These dew points measure moisture in the atmosphere down in the 60s so we really don't have as you can see in the the bottom corner of your screen there 74 degrees and that's what it feels like we don't have really any heat index to deal with and this is nice so enjoy it and that's uh in the afternoon it was fairly pleasant as well yesterday even though temperatures did skyrocket at one point up to uh, 103 but with that really dry air you could actually it was tolerable if you were in the shade now this morning temperatures are going to be right around uh, say mid 70s partly cloudy skies or mostly clear skies however you want to put it and then later on today 100 for a high temperature yeah there will be a couple of showers out there one or two of them i think even fewer than what we had around here yesterday and get used to triple digits because they're going to be sticking around now again we're not going to have any real heat index to deal with later on today it may actually feel a degree or two below that we stay very hot through the weekend and after today i mean it's other than a, a rogue shower trying to pop up, there's no rain in the forecast till maybe sometime next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and Officer Marcos Trujillo. And yeah, we had a couple of spots on the map earlier and nothing. Well, we do have one. Okay. Now this one, it is being reported as a major accident and this is gonna affect folks that are uh, westbound on I-10 exiting Fort W.W. White on that exit ramp. Uh, that's where we have that rollover accent currently in the clearing stages, but other areas looking pretty good. Let's take a look outside through Shans Guide right now. 410 at Callahan travel both directions still running smoothly with no delays moving over to uh, up 410 to Braunfels. No problems there. And then we get one more look at a camera there. 37 to 9th Street so far smooth sailing. Stephanie. Sounds good. Thank you, Marcus. San Antonio police say gunfire that may have been meant for someone else found its way to an east side man. He was shot while sleeping inside his home in the 400 block of South Olive. Our Katrina Weber is at Public Safety Headquarters with a live report. Now, Katrina, what's the status of that victim? The police told us he was taken to a hospital for treatment that he was shot in his ankle. Although the gunfire did reach his house, police believe that it was actually aimed for a different house, one where they have been several times. No one was inside that targeted home at the time. Some of the stray bullets also hit other neighbors' houses. The man who was shot was sleeping when this happened just before one this morning. Police found shell casings in the street and a rifle in the driveway of one home. They believe the shooters left it there as they ran away. 
Well, they told us there were three shooters in all, the one with the rifle and two others with handguns. They, they believe that they stood at the corner and then fired away at the houses, then ran away and got into a car getting away. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. We are following a developing story out of Grand Prairie right now between Dallas and Fort Worth, where a large fire broke out at the Poly America factory. This is a live look at the scene right now. WFAA in Dallas reporting that the fire is as big as a football field and several fire departments and an airport foam sprayer on the scene right now. Now, meteorologists at WFAA say the smoke plume was so large it lowered temperatures in the area. Local officials in that area still do not know what started that fire. And we're going to keep an eye on that big fire up there in the Metroplex. Here closer to home, more rural COVID-19 patients being medevaced to San Antonio area hospitals. Airline flight crews report they've conducted 72 known or suspected COVID transfers since March between their four bases. Crews have increased their safety protocols, protect themselves and decontaminate aircraft. The company says those strict protocols have helped ensure that none of the flight staff have contracted the virus. We change flight suits, we wash our flight suits, we'll take a shower, and then we follow up with a call to one of our clinical directors just to go over the details of what we've uh, done to decontaminate our aircraft and our cells, and then go on for the next patient. We're trying to do that as quickly as possible. Boy, they're busy. Air Life says their calls are about 25% higher than their typical flight volumes for this same time last year. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf says there will be three mega voting sites in San Antonio this November. One site at the AT&T Center where Spurs staff will help with elections operations. The others are the Mission Concepcion Sports Complex and the Alcifar Shrine Temple. Judge Wolf saying county commissioners are also working to get a fourth location in District 2, which is mainly the west side of the county. The mega voting sites are in addition to the regular polling locations planned. 633, former Vice President Joe Biden is the official nominee for the Democratic Party in the 2020 presidential race. The party formally nominated him during the second night of the Democratic National Convention yesterday. ABC's Inez de la Quatera has more. Good morning. For the second night, Democrats once again trying to show that Joe Biden can also appeal to Republicans. Former Vice President Joe Biden officially becoming the Democratic nominee for president. With his wife, Dr. Joe Biden, by his side, closing out the second night of a virtual DNC. The heart of this nation still beats with kindness and courage. That's the soul of America Joe Biden is fighting for now. From former President Bill Clinton. The difference is stark. You know what Donald Trump will do with four more years? Blame, bully, and belittle. And you know what Joe Biden will do? Build back better. To the 17 rising star Democrats that spoke in lieu of a traditional keynote address. Democrats working hard to show that the party is united and calling members of all groups and ages to get out and vote. I've been doing this for a long time, so let me just be plain. Black people, especially black women, are the backbone of this party. And if we don't show up, Democrats don't get elected. Meanwhile, President Trump trying to distract attention from the Democrats out on the stump in critical swing states. This election that we're going into is the most important election in the history of our country. Tonight, it'll be former President Barack Obama's turn to speak. A spokesperson tells ABC News he plans to warn that democracy itself is on the line and outline why Biden and his running mate Kamala Harris have the character and experience needed to lead America out of the COVID-19 crisis. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. Senator Kamala Harris is expected to accept the Democratic vice presidential nomination tonight, officially becoming the first woman of color on a major party ticket. A source familiar with her speech told CNN she's been working on it since the day Biden selected her as his running mate. In addition to former President Barack Obama, other speakers tonight include former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi and U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren. And today on GMSA at 9, we talk with CNN analyst Karen Kafa about the second night of the Democratic National Convention and what we can expect for night three. That's this morning after Good Morning America on KSAT 12.
In your other morning headlines, a new Senate intelligence report shows Russia interfered in the 2016 election and the Trump campaign welcomed the foreign help. A bipartisan committee released those findings just yesterday. It says the Trump campaign's interactions with Russian intelligence during the campaign posed a grave threat to American counterintelligence efforts. The report did not specify if there's enough evidence that the campaign worked with Russia to sway the election. However, it says interference in the 2016 election is indisputable and is a warning about interference in this year's presidential election. The U.S. military investigating a report of a possible drone flying close to Air Force One on Sunday. A drone coming close to Air Force One is a major security breach. They are banned in the restricted national security airspace around Washington. U.S. officials say a sensor system did not detect anything, but they are still investigating. The White House has declined to comment. Two people now been arrested after that cargo ship ran aground off Mauritius, causing a major spill in the Indian Ocean. Mauritius is an island nation off the eastern coast of Madagascar. Police arrested the ship's captain and chief officer on Tuesday. The incident caused at least 1,000 metric tons of oil to leak into a pristine lagoon there in the Indian Ocean. Over the weekend, authorities declared the area a forbidden zone after the ship split in two on Saturday. Time now, 637 and 74 degrees for now. Getting older means facing new realities, and that could mean accepting more help from others. After the break, we'll look at ways to cope with losing some independence in the senior years. Right now on KSAT.com, Tejano singer Ramoneta speaks about the loss of his mother and brother this summer. After the coronavirus pandemic hit, performances stopped for Herrera. In May, his mother died. In June, he and his entire family tested positive for the virus. And last month, his brother died of the virus. Herrera spoke with KSAT.com in an exclusive interview about the two losses and how hard it's been for his family. The losses inspired Herrera to get back into the recording booth and record the popular Christian song, I Can Only Imagine. The song has since been released and can be heard on Christian and Tejano radio stations. For more on Herrera's interview and to listen to the song, just head to our website. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. It is inevitable that we become more dependent on others as we age. Although it's a natural part of growing older, it's important to know how to cope in the best way possible. David Sears offers advice on how to guide you through the difficulties of losing some independence. There is no real roadmap when it comes to the loss of independence. There are not any quick fixes to help you accept it or a perfect way to offer help to someone coming to terms with it. But there are a few ways to make it a little easier. According to Consumer Affairs, losing independence means you start having trouble managing physical, emotional, or social parts of your day-to-day -day life. And sometimes it can be hard to notice when it's happening to a loved one. One of the clearest signs to look for is when they are physically unable to do everyday tasks. That includes simple things like driving or remembering to clean the kitchen. But not all signs are physical. Depression often goes undiagnosed in elderly people, and losing your physical independence can lead to losing control over your emotions. Some older people may experience increased irritability and anger, unexplained guilt or feeling helpless, or be reluctant to ask for help. If someone you know is going through this, you'll want to support them as best you can. Be patient. Help them get out of the house. Ask them how they're feeling, and most importantly, listen to them. Even if you think you're helping, you could be accidentally dismissing their concerns. And finally, take some time to care for yourself. Caring for someone can be physically and emotionally exhausting. If you're feeling overwhelmed, try hiring a caretaker while you take some time off. There are not any easy answers to help you deal with the loss of independence, either for yourself or someone you love. But with patience, care, and encouragement, you can help each other move forward in productive ways that can enrich your life. David Sears, KSAT 12 News. Well, KSAT is your back to school station and with the start of the new school year, despite all the differences, it is still a time to celebrate. That's right, you can do that with KSAT by sending in your pictures of your student. So this is Madeline and Lily, both starting school, and we hope you have a great start of the year. If you'd like to send in pictures, head to KSAT.com's Back to School page. We may show them on the air right here 
on GMSA. Best luck to everybody, and don't forget, we've got more schools opening up next week. Very true. Stay with us. And if you're looking for a new furry friend, the SA Humane Society wants you to meet a cat named Goose. So this is Goose, six years old, loves attention and food. Who doesn't? He had some teeth removed, though, so he can only have wet food, and he will always let you know when he wants to his head scratched. Of course. of course. Cats aren't your thing. How about a dog? This is Butterfly, six-year-old terrier mix. She loves cuddling up next to the people she loves, giving kisses and treats and sits real pretty. And time for more kittens. These three are all looking for a new home. There's Rodney, Henry, and Lucy. They're all two months old and extremely playful. If you want to adopt any of these animals, just get in touch with the SA Humane Society. You can start the process at sahumane.org. So what I'd like to do is uh, you uh, adopt Goose, and then you get these other kittens too, and you name one Maverick and Iceman, and you go through <laughs> the whole Top Gun thing, yeah, right? Yeah, I was gonna say, now just we have the Top Gun, top gun theme. The entire squadron there at Top Gun Funny. School. 645, 74 degrees. How's it looking out there with traffic now. I know it wasn't too bad earlier, right, Marcus? Not too bad. We just have one issue, but it's uh, not really on the main lanes. It's on the exit ramp. Westbound I-10, right there's your exiting WW White, that one vehicle rollover accident. Uh, still in the clearing stages. Take a look outside through a trans guide. 35 at top of one. We do have a disabled vehicle there off to the side there on that shoulder. So just be careful with that one. Moving over, 14 in New Braunfels, no problems there. And then I-10 in Frio, you can see inbound and outbound lanes so far moving quick, uh, smoothly right now. And a pretty quick shout out right now to a viewer yesterday. Noticed me even with the mask. Guess he recognized the voice. So thank you, Mr. Jeff Seaman, for being a viewer and watching. Good morning, San Antonio. We yep. thank yeah, all thank our you. viewers. Indeed. Mike liked this windmill shot a lot, especially considering the theme of the last couple of days. Yes, uh, this gentleman sends in pictures quite often. And look at that one. For, notice also when well, that windmill's getting to work out. Oh, it's really those, going, uh, isn't it? Those winds out there. But boy, that's a beautiful, beautiful picture. And if there is a lightning storm, yes, pictures are very pretty, but stay inside. It's very dangerous to be outside, uh, even just to, to look at a storm like that. But thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. All right, sun is not going to be coming up for about another 15 minutes or so, a little bit after 7 o'clock, but boy, beautiful uh, sunrise on tap. And we got a couple of wispy clouds hanging around there. High temperatures today, a lot of triple digits around the area again today. We hit 103 yesterday right before those clouds started to move on in there and some folks got some of that rain. Heat index, what's interesting is this computer model is holding our heat index at 97 degrees today because the air is going to be so dry. Dew point temperatures as they have been doing are dropping down in the afternoon. This one actually has us going down into the mid 40s, which may be pushing things a little bit as far as the dry air is concerned. But this is just a perfect example of when you have dry air, uh, your body can cool itself that much more efficiently as opposed to the moist air. So that's why in the shade it can actually feel a little bit cooler than what the actual air temperature is because your body is really cooling itself. Like if you hopped out of a pool, it would actually feel kind of chilly this afternoon. Now, as far as rain today, we've got not much showing up on this computer model. Uh, one or two little sprinkles are possible today. It's just a mention of it. I don't even put a percentage of rain chances in the in the forecast today because they're going to be so few and far between. But we do still have this northerly flow in the atmosphere. So it, like the past couple of days, yes, there may be one or two of them trying to pop up. We're watching these two systems out here. This one uh, has a better chance of developing into a uh, maybe a tropical depression or uh, even further from that. But what we're going to be watching uh, as these two continue to work their way to the west, they're going to move through, and this is the forecast as of right now, move through the Caribbean. This first one uh, should make it somewhere into the middle of the Gulf of Mexico by about late Monday, Tuesday, and that hopefully will bring us a chance for some rain. The second one as of now looks like it's going to be making more of a right hand turn in toward the southeast United States. Uh, obviously, it's still a week away. Got to keep tabs on these, but that's our next rain chance is from that disturbance right there as it works its way in toward the Gulf by the first of the week. And between now and then, I mean, other than a stray shower today, there's just nothing out there. 94 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies and then a high temperature today up to 100 with a shower or two. Most of us 
like the past couple of days won't be seeing any rain today. And then we go into the next couple of days. Low temperatures are still going to be very nice around here. We are going to be uh, about normal mid 70s. Humidity is going to be held in check. Humidity is going to start to come back into the picture a little bit. Not overwhelmingly, but a little bit more by the uh, end of the weekend. But between now and then, at least we're not going to be, you know, you're not going to walk outside and just be overwhelmed <laughs> by humidity. It's it, not oppressive with a capital O this time. No, it's mm -hmm. been a nice break. We yeah. appreciate it, Overall, Mike. pretty good week so far. Yeah, not bad. Thank Although you, Mike. Not. 649, 74 degrees. And with the weather outside getting nicer, many of us will be rolling down our windows of the car while we go for a drive. But some experts say it might not be the best idea. Join us tomorrow on GMSA where we see how it increases your exposure to air pollution. Outside with live cam on your Wednesday morning, our sunrise in progress. It's a beautiful day here in South Texas. You're watching GMSA. Good morning. Coming up here on a Wednesday on GMA, we're going to have the latest on night two of the virtual Democratic convention. Democrats formally nominating Joe Biden for president. Big speeches from por former President Bill Clinton and former Secretary of State Colin Powell showing his support from the Republican side. Dr. Jill Biden will join us right after her personal speech making the case for her husband, and you'll see it here on GMA. Stray bullets rain down on some east side homes overnight. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. One of the bullets hit a man in bed. The police say he was sleeping around one this morning when he suffered that gunshot wound to his ankle. Police believe the shooters were aiming for a different home in the 400 block of South Olive. When the bullets went into that man's home and those of some of his neighbors, officers found one of the weapons involved, a rifle in someone's driveway. They believe the shooters tossed it as they ran away. Police tell us there were three shooters in all who took aim from the corner. They then got into a car and got away. Reporting from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Let's go back live to the Metroplex right now. The developing story south of, south of Dallas Fort Worth International Airport. Now the sun is up and we're getting an aerial view in the sunlight of that raging fire at a factory in Grand Prairie. WFAA reporting that several departments and an airport foam sprayer are still on the scene. We'll, we'll follow this story all morning long and give you an update in our later newscasts. Coming up today on GMS 89, we have a jam packed show. Our Dylan Collier joins us to break down the latest defenders investigation surrounding a Ponzi scheme. And SA Live's Mike Osterhage and Jen Tobias Streski are here to preview their back to school special airing tonight. Plus, as part of National Black Owned Business Month, we're highlighting a local wedding planner who's preparing couples for the uh, all the days they'll spend together. You don't want to miss it today at 9 after Good Morning America. All right, let's take one last look <coughs> at the roads with Officer Marcus Trujillo. And we still have that stalled vehicle, 35 top wine off the side, and we do have some assistance there for that vehicle. I believe that it's a flat tire they need some assistance with. Uh, 35 in Brooklyn here in the downtown area. So far, no problems there. Then take a look up there by the airport, 281 410. Things still look great. Mike. Thanks, sir. And wow, it's going to be a beautiful sunrise this morning. A couple of clouds out there and it's actually very pleasant when you step outside. We're at uh, 75 degrees right now and that's basically what it feels like because the humidity is being held in check. 94 at noon, 100 for a high temperature today. Maybe a stray shower or two. I really wouldn't count on it too much and we're going to have a lot of triple digits all the way through the rest of the week and staying hot through the weekend. Not bad in the morning, though. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike and Marcus. That's it for now, guys. All right. See you in an hour. Good Morning America is coming up next. We'll start your morning off right tomorrow morning right here on KSAT, 430 to 7.